Okay, I'm gonna go through these steps really quickly and get to pulling up. Notice my speed, it's a little faster than when I start pulling up or even opening up. It's not full blast, it's a good medium. Even here, I've, I've sealed the clay right here a little bit. And again, as I'm talking about these shapes, this is kind of a mushroom cap. And then it goes in just a little bit here. And that gives your, the bottom palms of your hands and your pinky a place to kind of rest and hug, not strangle, just kind of hug the clay while you're working. There's opening it up. There's making the floor. I'm gonna make sure the floor is nice before I start to pull up. I'm going straight from center over to about four or three o'clock. So I'm just kind of sliding my fingers like this. And I'm compressing it too. You kind of want to press down on that floor just a little bit. You, of course, you don't want to go all the way to the bat and make a hole, but pressing down that clay will keep your um, pots from getting an S crack in it as it dries, that compression. All right, now to pull up, we're gonna switch hands. We're gonna brace our right hand and your right hand is gonna become the outer hand and your left hand is gonna move inside. And I'm gonna use, sometimes I let my pinky lay out here, sometimes I bring it in, depending on how open my cup is, if I have room to put all four fingers in. So depending on how big your cup is or how big your hands are, you, you're gonna to have to kind of find a way to adjust your fingers as you move. And you'll, your, your hands will start to grow a brain here and figure it out. Um, I'm gonna rest a thumb out here, kind of as a guiding left thumb. These fingers are gonna be inside. For the first pull, I'm gonna leave my pinky out here while it's still a little narrow. And then I'm gonna um, use my right fingers as kind of a scoop. Now, remember this is centrifugal force. So we're all, every, all the clay is wanting to go like this. It's pulling out and we're trying to like defy gravity at the same time. So if I want a straight, straight cylinder, I'm gonna to try to put a little more pressure on the outside hand so that it counterbalances that uh, the way that the clay wants to pull out. If you are making a bowl, then eventually you'll put a more pressure uh, with your left hand to pull it out. So you'll, you'll get a sense of this as you, as you work along here. So again, left hand in the inside. I'm working at about four o'clock here. I've got a scoop. We had a, an old student who used to say, um, here's the elevator and here's all the people. So you just think about it slowly guiding up. You're gonna, you're gonna come together on that first one, come together about um, where you created, where I showed you where that little notch was and that's your first. You don't go, don't go for the whole thing at once or you're gonna just, a donut is gonna pop off in your hand and you're gonna have a cookie left on the wheel. You want to come and gather at a safe distance and pull straight up very slowly. Again, my wheel is going a little slower than um, when I was centering. So I'm gathering and sometimes it helps to just count to 10 and go as slow as possible. You want to um, actually touch your clay at every point that it's going through your hand. If you go too fast, you're going to get a spiral. If you go too slow, you're gonna strangle it and it's gonna pop off in your hands. Um, so you'll know if that happens, obviously. Um, so I'm pulling, I'm staying that same distance the whole way up. I'm not getting any closer with my fingers and see, I'm gonna float off. That's how my fingers were on the cup and I didn't get any closer as I came to the lip. So breathe. And then come back to the bottom and, and scoop again and come just a little bit closer this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, float off the top. And sometimes just that counting 
or just like actually think about the wheel going through your hands at this time so that you're not too anxious. You're not trying to rush it, um, but you also wanna keep yourself on pace and not slow down. If you give some a part of your cup too much attention at this point, it'll it'll wear out really quickly. So if you feel a thin spot, it doesn't need to be touched more. The rest of it needs to be balanced out. So just be careful to not give to give everything equal attention. So I've got a nice height here. I see a little water in the bottom. I'm gonna take a squeezed out sponge. I'm gonna sneak down and grab that water. Not putting too much pressure on, just enough to get that moisture up. All right, I've got a nice cylinder. If you are feeling like, say, uh, you kind of let it go and it, it's a little too wide of a lip for you, um, you can come in and just very gently with, with moist hands, give it a nice little hug, a little at a time. Okay, we got it back to center. Now, if you do that, it's kind of like um, if you bunch up material, um, it's going to feel wrinkly. So if you have this straight material and then all of a sudden you bunch it up, you've got these wrinkles in here. So you want to go back out and smooth, go smooth it over just a little bit so that those particles are lining up in the clay the right way. So you've got your height, and then you wanna think about your shape. Maybe for a while, you're just like, hey, let's just successfully do some height. Um, as you think about shape, you may love those throwing lines. You may wanna get rid of them. To get rid of them, you take a rib on the outside, fingers on the inside, and the rib is just balancing, doing the same thing on the outside that your fingers did, but it's using the, um, straight part, solid, smooth part of that rib to kind of scrape away the extra ridges so that it's smoother on the outside. If you're gonna draw an image out here or uh, do some special carving, it's gonna be a, a nicer surface to work on if it's smooth out here. If you want to um, make it wider or that round shape, again, you're gonna press you can shape your rib however you want, and then press the clay into it, press out from the out inside. And I don't know if you notice, but every time that I work myself up and I come to the top, I kind of sit here and just remind that lip that we're going in a solid circle. It's not getting too thick. I'm laying my thumb on it so it's all the boogers and uh, things are smoothing out. So you're just kind of reinforcing that strength at the top so that it doesn't get too thin. So see how I'm changing that shape um, just by pressing a little more from the inside. There's still a counter balance on the outside, but more pressure coming from the inside. So I wouldn't do that and not have something out here just keeping it from going crazy. All right, say you did all this and then your lip was a little wonky. I didn't go over this the last time, but since my lip is just a little wonky and I know it's wonky because you can see in the image, it's just bouncing just a little bit. Um, if it's bouncing a lot, you're definitely going to want to get rid of it. Uh, this is this is very slight. I don't think you would notice it uh, once it wasn't spinning, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. You got your needle tool in your right hand, and you're going to kind of hold it like this. Okay, I'm going to balance my pointer finger right on the tip so I kind of can have a feeler for where it's going through. I'm going to kind of come straight out of my belly button again. I'm going to balance the lip with my left fingers. Again, my hands are as braced as possible. My right elbow is tucked into like my ribs and my left arm is braced on the uh, basin. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to 
the, again, the wheel is already moving. This is not something you do with it sitting still. So it's already moving. I'm going to slide the needle in until I poke my other finger and then, then let make sure it does what, one full rotation and then it'll pop off in your hands. The key is to keep it at the same height the whole time. All right, and then you come back with your smooth fingers and that's a whole lot nicer. Now to smooth out that lip, you this part, you really wanna think about how it's gonna come into contact with the drinker's mouth. You want it to be nice and smooth, not too thick, not too thin, it's definitely not jagged. To, to clean that up, you can use your fingers like I have been, laying one on top like this and one on either side and giving it a light pinch. You could use the webbing in your fingers, um, just a tiny bit of water there. And I'm just kind of pinching it with my the webbing on my fingers a little bit. That's nice. Um, again, you can use a notch cut out of a rib and but I would just make sure you're balancing a little bit with your fingers too. You could also use a sponge or, uh, like this or a folded up piece of paper towel. Again, that paper towel, just keep track of it and make sure it gets thrown away and um, it's not a big deal if it gets in your clay, but it is a big deal when you find it in your reclaim when you're throwing a perfect pot and then all of a sudden ooh, there's a decomposing piece of paper towel. So try to keep track of it and not uh, get it in your clay. Uh, so you could fold that paper towel over like this and kind of wrap it around the edge. They make things called chamois, but I can't find mine. So that's a cheap chamois with the paper towels. Okay, so you've pulled up, you have your shape, you have your nice lip. The last thing you wanna do is check your foot. Some of you might have a lot of clay out here. Some of you might just have a little bit. You wanna set yourself up really well for an easy trimming or an easy just cleaning of the foot. And this is where the wood tool comes in. I'm gonna slide that wood tool in just like this and then I'm gonna tilt it. And what it's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna take away that excess and then give it a little notch to, for the wire tool to come underneath. So I'm laying it straight against the bottom. So if this is the cup, I'm going straight against like this, and then I'm gonna curve it down a little bit to give it a little notch. All right, then I'm gonna clean this extra clay off the wheel. So already this is gonna be an easier bat to clean off. You don't wanna leave that clay on there and get for it to get dry because it's gonna be even harder to clean off then. And then you wanna get your wire tool. Sometimes I put just a tiny bit of a puddle of water, scoop a tiny bit right there or squeeze a little bit out with your sponge and what that's going to do is when you drag your wire tool across that, it's going to bring just a little bit of water with it so that the release, uh, it releases a little easier. You want to make your wire tool as tight as possible. It probably means wrapping it around your fingers and then putting your fingers, your index fingers down and pressing it down to the bat. Keep it as tight as possible the whole time you drag towards your belly button. Again, you want to pull this towards yourself not push away. If you push away, you kind of lose lose it a little bit and you tend to go up and you take out a chunk of your foot. You want to pull it towards you as tight as possible to the back. And then you saw the cuff shift a little bit and this is where your rag comes in. Grab your rag and wipe your hands and get them as clean as possible. And you're going to come in here and twist and it should pop off. And then you hopefully already have a place to set your well-made cup and then get started on your next piece. Before you get started on your next piece, take a rib and clean that bat off. Um, I'm trying to make a video, so I haven't been diligent at cleaning up my scraps, but if you need to stand up and stretch, do that and give yourself a little, just take a minute and prep your space again. Get all the 
chunks that you've cut off or that have flown off, have your scrap bucket here and throw those in your scrap bucket. Keep track of your tools. Your, your basin is gonna be really tight and it's really easy to lose a, a tool in there or a sponge and it's no fun to go digging for this sharp needle tool in, in this place. You'll have a table outside of the basin in your wheel and it's nice to just remember to set your tools out there um, as you work. And then remember at the end, when you're all done, you wanna take a sponge and some water and always clean up your space. One, it's always nice to sit down and work at a clean space. That's always way more inviting than coming into a messy space. Um, two, we need to do it to take care of the wheels. So we are entrusting these wheels to you um, and it is so important that you take care of them and taking care of them means making sure that they get cleaned after, after you're done using them. So your basin will have two tabs here at the base and you're gonna press down and push out or pull towards you depending on which side is which and they're half, two half moons. So it's gonna come out and you're gonna have like a half moon, a crescent type shape to clean out and what you want to do is again use that slop in your reclaim bucket or throw it outside don't throw it down your drain sponge it all off use your throwing water to clean off the area and then you're set and you're clean for next time i also said to my class um and just a reminder like don't forget to get up and take breaks Give yourself a little rest. If you feel your body getting fatigued, get up and get a drink or a snack. If you still wanna be working, just take a five minute break. Make sure that you're moving your legs. Um, and then also, um, I always wanna always end on a good note. So if you're not getting the throwing or the centering down, that's okay. You have your hand building skills. You still have this relationship with clay. You can go over and make a really cool little pinch pot really quick. And then you just have this really good feeling about clay so that you're not so intimidated next time you sit down at the wheel. Um, and I think that's just so important to leave on a good note so that you remember what you love about clay and that it will bring back. And just remember to take deep breaths. Uh, it's okay. It may be frustrating at times, but um, let it be... Um, let it be a fun time. Um, this is not a, stress, a stressful class. Um, it's going to take some work, but, it, but let it be fun like it's supposed to. All right.